Okay guys, time for our last circle geometry theorem. That's theorem 9a and it's converse 9b. Now 9a has an asterisk next to it which means the proof of this theorem is examinable. To be honest, it's an incredibly popular proof to ask for in an exam, so make sure you know it. Now the theorem sounds quite confusing, so let's read what it says. It says the angle between a tangent to a circle and a chord joined from the, drawn from the point of contact. Now that's a very long way of saying you have a tangent, BT, and you have a point of contact with the circle, which is at T. It's the point where the tangent touches the circle. Then you have a chord, which is CT. Now it's talking about the angle between this tangent and the chord. So the angle it's talking about in this first part is angle T1 plus angle T2. Now apparently, this theorem says this angle will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Now what does that mean? Alternate means on the other side, on the opposite side. And segment means part of the circle. So which angle are they talking about here? Now what happens is you need to Use your fingers to see what chord is being used. So your chord is CT and your tangent is BT. Now if you leave one of your fingers at the point of tangency and you take your other finger back to C, which angle do these two points make at the circumference? But this must be on the other side of the circle. And the answer is they make the angle at P. So this theorem is saying that angle T1 and T2 in yellow is equal to angle P at the circumference. Now guys, finding the pair of angles that are equal in theorem 9 can be very confusing. So ask your teacher in class to show you how to use your fingers to show you exactly which angles are equal. Now this theorem is often called the windsurfer angle theorem because as you can see the tangent forms like the board of a windsurfer and the triangle in the circle forms like the sail of a windsurfer. And therefore, we often refer to this as the windsurfer angle theorem. Now, let's try and prove this. First of all, please write a note in your theorem that says alternate segment means on the other side of the circle. And as I've said, ask your teacher to show you how to use your fingers to find these angles. And second of all, please can you take a note that this angle must be at the circumference. It can't be an angle in the middle of the circle. It must be at the circumference. Okay, we're given circle with center O and tangent ATB and chord CT. That's what we're dealing with. We're apparently trying to prove that angle T1 plus angle T2 is the same as angle P. Now let's look at our constructions. First of all, we're going to construct diameter TD, which means it goes through the center of the circle. Which means I'm going to label a third angle at point T, and I'm going to call it T3. I'm then going to join P to D, and I'm going to label angles P1 and P2. So I'm going to write under constructions, join PD to form P1 and P2, which means I should go and correct what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that angle T1 plus angle T2 in actual fact equals P2, because I've now labeled it. Okay, let's have a look at our proof. First of all, I know that I drew a diameter. And theorem 3 says the angle at the circumference that's created by a diameter is 90 degrees. And my reason? Angle's in a semicircle. I also know that angle T1 plus T2 plus T3 will be 90. And that was theorem 7. Tangents are perpendicular to radii. But this means that angle P1 plus P2 together must be equal to angle T1 plus T2 plus T2 plus T3, because both of these halves were equal to 90 degrees, so they must equal to each other. So there's no reason for that statement. It's a logical conclusion from my two lines before. Now, if you look carefully, I can see the butterfly angle shape, and theorem 4 says that angles in the same segment are equal. So I'm going to argue that P1 and T3 are equal, and this is theorem 4. Angles in the same segment. But this means that P1 and T3 are equal in the line before. So if those parts are equal, that means that the rest of those statements must be equal. 
So that means P2 must be equal to what's left on the right-hand side, which is T1 plus T2. Now again, this doesn't need a reason. This simply follows from my two lines above. If one part is equal and the whole thing is equal, the remaining parts have to be equal. Now that's exactly what we're trying to prove. We've just proved what we said we wanted to do. But there's also a second angle that they could ask you to prove here. This tangent makes a second angle with the chord. It makes angle A, T, C. Now, they could ask us to prove that this will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment, which in this case is angle Q. So I'm going to add in a second thing which we could prove. We could prove that ATC equals angle Q. So I'm going to start on that part now. Now that part's pretty easy, if you've done the first part, because I know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad add to 180 degrees. So angle P2 plus Q equals 180. And my reason? Opposite angles of cyclic quad. I also know that ATB is a straight line, which means ATC plus T2 plus T1 equals 180 degrees, adjacent angles on a straight line. But the previous part, we proved that P2 equals T2 plus T1. So this is going to help us. In our green line, what I've said is P2 and Q must equal ATC and T2 and T1 because both what I wrote in blue and what I wrote in red equals 180. So they must equal each other. But as I've said, T1 and T2 are already equal to P2. We argued that in the previous part. So those two parts are equal, which means the remaining parts must be equal. Now guys, to be honest, in an exam, we only have six marks to spend on proving a theorem. So I've only ever seen them ask you to prove that angle T1 plus T2 equals P2. This second part, I have never seen asked in an exam simply because it means you have to prove the whole of the first part and then the second part. So concentrate on f proving the first part of this theorem. That's what's most important. Now this is a very, very common theorem to use. And when we use this theorem, our reason is going to be tan chord theorem. So it's quite a simple reason. It's not very descriptive. It's simply tan chord theorem. So let's have a look at what this looks like in an example. This says, determine the size of the angles marked with the letters in the following question. Notice that MT is a tangent, which sets up all kinds of alarm bells, and this has a circle center. So in terms of circle center, I start thinking radii. I start thinking angle at center is twice angle at circumference. There's a whole bunch of stuff about perpendicular in theorem 1. And as soon as I see the word tangent, I'm starting to think a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius, etc., now, I've already just gone and labeled in the fact that OP and OB will be equal because radii are always equal. So I'm immediately going to label that in because it might be useful. I'm also going to go and label in that X plus 62 will be 90 because this is a tangent. And theorem 7 said tangents were always perpendicular to radii. So we already know quite a lot of information. I'm also going to draw in my windsurfer angle. My tangent is MT, which forms my board, and my sail of my windsurfer is triangle ABP. That means I'm going to have some angles which are equal according to theorem 9a. Now what angles are those? Well, there's my angle between my chord and my tangent. It's 62 degrees. And it will equal the angle in the alternate segment, which is the angle at A, which is Z. So I can immediately start. Z equals 62. That is theorem 9a in action, the tan chord theorem. Now x, I've already said that x and the 62 will make 90. So x is 90 minus 62. And my reason was tangents are perpendicular to radii. That was theorem 7. So x is equal to 28. Now x forms part of a triangle with angle B2. And actually, I've already labeled this an isosceles triangle. So that means my angles opposite my equal sides will be equal. So I first got to start with arguing that my sides are equal. 
OB equals OP because of radii. Now this means that B2 will be equal to X, which I've already seen is 28 degrees. And my reason? Angles opposite equal sides. Now that's perfect. Because Y will be 180 degrees minus 28 minus 28. Because we have sum of angles in a triangle. Which means Y is 124. Now just as I was doing that, I started to realize that that was quite a lot of work. Whereas I think I could have done it a different way. Because I'm pretty sure that angle Y is at the center and it would be twice the angle of the circumference if it's made by the same points. Now I can see that Z is made by P and B and so is Y. So the angle at the center will be twice the angle at circumference, which means Y is also 124 for that reason. So guys, there's always a long way and a short way in geometry, and there's lots of ways to get to the answer. Try and use the mark allocation in an exam to indicate how many lines you should be, should be writing. There might be an easier way. So let's have a look at theorem 9b, which is the exact converse. Now the proof of this is not an examinal proof, thank goodness, because it's quite a complicated one. Now what this says is if you have a random line which goes through the endpoint of a chord, and if it makes an angle that's equal to the angle in the alternate segment, so if you are given these wind surfer angles are equal, then you can prove that this line is a tangent, so the exact opposite of 9a. So if you're given that those angles are equal, or that those angles are equal, then PAT would be a tangent. So this is the second way to prove something's a tangent. The first way was in 7b. If you could prove that a line is perpendicular to the radius, then it's a tangent. But to be honest, 9b is the most common way to prove something is a tangent. And the reason we're going to use, if we need to do this, is because angle between line and chord, oh, that's quite hard to remember, so fortunately they also accept converse of tan chord theorem, which I find easier to remember. So let's have a look at an example. Now this one's a bit blurry, but you should have it in front of you. This question says, prove that TRS is a tangent. Now the easiest way to do that is wind surfer angles. So I've gone and highlighted my wind surfer. My tangent is TR and it forms an angle of 2x with the chord RQ. But RQ make an angle of 60 at the circumference. So I know that I need to prove that these two angles are equal. Now the only thing I can see here is the 3x, the x and the 2x. And I note very quickly that that forms a straight line which means that 3x plus x plus 2x will be 180 degrees adjacent angles on a straight line. Now if I just solve this like an equation, like terms on my left hand side, it gives me 6x, and then I divide by 6, so x is 30. Now that means I can go and work out what this angle is between my chord and my tangent. It is 2x, which means it's 30 degrees. So angle QRT equals 60. Sorry, I said 30. So 2x would be 60 degrees. Now this is perfect because I've just shown that my angle between my line and my chord equals my angle in my alternate segment, which is exactly what 9b said we had to prove. So I can conclude that TRS is a tangent and the easiest reason for me is converse of tan chord theorem. Now guys, this concludes all our theorems. It takes a lot of work to know all these proofs off by heart and to know how to put these all together in mixed examples. And the key to success in geometry, unfortunately, is practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. So now go and spend lots of time, lots of time on mixed examples. Good luck, guys.